welcome back. What I've got here is a My Rio, which is an FPGA device, and uh, I can perform FFTs on it in real time. It's got an A to D converter. In fact, it's got several A to D converters, analog to digital converters. But it's got no built-in anti-aliasing of any sort, so you have to put that on externally. And I've deliberately not put anything on to show the effects of aliasing. So that's being fed from a function generator, which will do sine waves, square waves, and triangular waves over a range of frequencies. The MyRio program is sampling at 50 kilohertz, and I'm displaying the spectrum on the top, and on the bottom, it's in this case a sine wave. So you can see the FFT of a sine wave is at 2 kilohertz, and, it's in the quite, and I notice it's triggered as well. I can, it's a triggering software that I can use. Now up on the top of the scale here is a Nyquist frequency, which is about 25 kilohertz. So anything higher than 25 should get reflected back, a bit like a mirror. So let's go up in frequency, just to show that I'm going up. It's quite clear on the screen. Up I go, and then when I hit, that's it, it goes back again, just like a mirror. And I keep going, like another video I had, and it goes up again, and it bounces back and forward because there's no anti-aliasing. Now, let's go back to about 2 kilohertz, as close as we can get to it. There, so that's 2 kilohertz. Now we'll switch on to a square wave. And of course, if you know from your Fourier series, uh, square waves only got odd harmonics. So there's 2 kilohertz, 6 kilohertz, and that should be 5 times 2, which is 10 kilohertz, and so on. So these are the odd harmonics as per theory, and they go down in magnitude. And there's our time domain waveform. Interesting thing happens though as I increase the frequency of the square wave. Now remember the Nyquist rate is 25 kilohertz. Now watch the harmonics, of course, they track upwards as they should do. But as I go a little bit higher there, you can see nasty little things happening. You can see frequencies on the way down. As the harmonics go all the way go go up the way, there's a frequency here, there's a harmonic making its way back down the way. And what that is is an aliased harmonic over here somewhere which is reflected back. So it's quite clear to see them. There they go. There's another one. So there's one here, that's an aliased one, that's an aliased one, and that's an aliased one. These are the true ones. So practically we'd have to put a filter here to chop them off. We can never chop them off completely, of course, because it's always going to be some residual amount of aliasing. So it's, that's quite interesting. If I go back down to about 4 kilohertz, so I can get it a little bit more accurately, that's close to 4. There's my third harmonic and fifth harmonic, but these bits are aliased. Oh, there it goes. And you can even see the one, at the tiny one at the near DC here, and as I increase it bounces back off zero, you see it? So this is uh, aliasing of higher harmonics, and I suppose the lesson to be learned here is that even though you think your signal is fine, it's a low frequency compared with the sampling rate, so the sampling rate's 50 kilohertz. We've only got a, let's say, a 4 kilohertz square wave, but its higher harmonics are getting alias back. There's one, there's the next one, there's the next one, there's the original fundamental third harmonic, fifth harmonic. And this would be the seventh harmonic getting folded back. So we could do, uh, if, this is, if this is fourth, four kilohertz, the uh, seventh harmonic will be at uh, 28 kilohertz, seven times four. And because 25 is the um, 
Nyquist rate, then uh, that 3 kilohertz uh, up to 28 will get folded back and become 25, uh, 25 minus 3, whatever that is, which is about here somewhere, I think. Okay, so that's uh, aliasing of a square wave. Thank you very much.